Hi, I'm Troy from Studio 33 Guitar. Thanks for watching. Today we're looking at how to play Knockin' on Heaven's Door. Originally written and recorded by Bob Dylan, but also covered by other artists like Eric Clapton, Guns N' Roses, and many others. This is a great song. It's a lot of fun to play. It's only four chords. And in fact, you can even get away with playing it using only three chords. And I'll show you how to do that. If you're a beginner, this is a really great song to learn. When I teach privately, this is one of the first songs that I teach my students because it has some really simple chord changes and some really simple strums. Now there's a couple of chords in this song that might be a little bit tricky if you're a brand new beginner, but I'm also gonna show you a couple of substitutions that you can use to make this song even easier. Now, as always, you can go to my website, studio33guitar.com, and you can download a free PDF of the chords and the lyrics for this song. If you print that off, it'll make it a little bit easier to follow along. And while you're there, you can check out some of the other chord charts that are on the site for other songs, and also some of the full courses that we have if you're interested in learning more about how to play guitar. But for now, let's zoom in on the neck and have a look at how to play Knocking on Heaven's Door. I'm going to start by showing you how to play the chorus of this song, and then I'll show you the verse. They're both very similar, but there's one extra chord in the verse, so we'll start with the easier part of learning the chorus first. And the first three chords that we're going to need for this song are G major, D major, and C major. Now this C major chord is a little bit tricky, especially if you're a brand new beginner, but don't worry, I'm gonna show you an alternative that you can play this, it'll be a lot easier. But first, let's just look at these three chords. Now if you've watched some of my other videos, you'll know that when I play a G chord, I typically recommend playing it like this, where you have these two fingers on the highest two strings on the third fret, followed by the index finger on the second fret of the A string, and then the middle finger up here. Now you can also play a G chord with just the pinky down here or just the ring finger down here. But like I said, I usually recommend playing it with these two fingers. And especially for this song, because the next chord that we're gonna play is going to be a D major chord, and that looks like this. And so that ring finger gets to stay in that exact same spot. So it means that you can use it as a bit of a pivot point and you don't have to move all your fingers to change from one chord to the other. I also usually recommend that you start with a really simple strum just so you can get the timing of the chord changes down and then you can come up with something a little bit more interesting for the strumming hand. So for now, we're just gonna play down strums and we're just gonna count one, two, three, four. So that G chord is going to get two strums. One, two. And then we're gonna to switch to that D chord and we're gonna give that two strums. One, two. Next, we're gonna to go to that C major chord. And if you're not familiar with how to play that, that's your ring finger on the third fret, then your middle finger, the next string down on the second fret. Then you're gonna skip over that next string and leave it open. And then your index finger on the B string on the first fret. And that chord's gonna get four strums. One, two, three, four. And then it starts over again. Now again, I'm gonna show you a little bit of a different way to play that C chord in a minute. But let's just get the timing of those changes down first. So we have the G chord, one, two. Then to the D, three, four. And then to the C major, one, two, three, four, and then it repeats. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And that's how you would play the chorus of a song. It would just repeat exactly like that all the way through. Now, if that C chord is a little bit tricky for you to play, you could play a different version of this chord that's called a C add nine chord. And that looks like this. Now the great thing about the C add nine chord is it's actually identical to that G chord, except these two fingers are moved down to the next set of strings. So again, that's another chord that you can use where you don't have to move very much. 
and these fingers can stay. So that ring finger actually gets to stay for all three chords. So we start with this G, then we go to the D chord, again that ring finger stays. And then for the C add nine, ring finger stays and we just plug that pinky back in. So together that would sound like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now let's look at how we would play the verse of the song. Now the nice thing is this played the exact same way and we're gonna be using the first two chords the same way, G and D. But now instead of going to that C major chord, we're gonna to go to an A minor chord. Now that A minor chord actually looks very similar to that C major chord that I showed you earlier. The only difference is now the ring finger comes down here or directly underneath the middle finger. So you have your index finger on that first fret, the B string, your ring finger, one string up on the second fret, and then your middle finger on the next string up, and then with your open A string. Now for these verses, we actually alternate that A minor chord and the C major chord. So the first time through, you're gonna play G, D, A minor, and the second time, you're gonna play G, D, C. And then it goes back, G, D, A minor, G, D, C. So that would sound like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Back to G. One, two, three, four. Now to C. One, two, three, four. Then G. So this time it'll be A minor. And now we're gonna go back to C again. I'll throw in the C add nine here. So now let's look at how we can make this strum a little bit more interesting. The first thing we're gonna do is add an upstroke after every second beat. So that's gonna be like this. One, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and. Now when you play those upstrokes, it's important to just catch those highest strings, usually just the top two, maybe three strings for that upstroke. And it's a little bit of a flick out motion with your hand. So we watch that again. One, two, and three, four, And once you're comfortable with that, we can add one more strum in there. So now we're gonna count one, two, and a, three, four, and a. So now on that and, it's actually gonna be a down, and the a uh is gonna be an up. So that's gonna sound like this. One, two, and a, three, four, and a. So up to speed, that would sound like this. Now the other trick that you can do to help make your chord changes a little bit smoother is when you hit those upstrokes, you can start moving your lower fingers to the next chord. So you can leave these higher ones where they are, but then as you hit those higher strings for the upstroke, you can start moving these lower fingers because they're not ringing out because you haven't strummed those. Let me demonstrate what that would look like. And as you watch my lower fingers, you'll notice that they'll lift off as I'm playing the upstrum. So that would sound like this.
Now it's a little bit noticeable when I'm playing slow like that, but when I speed that up, you won't notice. It'll sound like a really smooth change. And one of the great things about this song is its simplicity. It has some really simple chords and some really simple strumming, and it really allows the song to really flow in a haunting kind of way. So when you're trying different strums, you don't really want to make it too complicated. Something that we just looked at there is probably about the most complicated kind of strum that you would want to do for this type of song. Otherwise, it can become kind of distracting from the overall sound of the song. Now, if you like this lesson, then make sure you check out some of the other song lessons on the channel. And if you have a request, then let me know in the comments down below what song you would like me to teach next. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.